بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, cherisher and sustainer of the world, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. All praise is due to Allah and his peace and blessing be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who followed him with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi This world is a competition ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this reality in the Holy Quran in many places with different phrases. Being in a race, being in a competition, should compete against one another, and so on. Now, what is it that we are competing in? Racing towards what? Competing in what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized this in one thing, which is goodness. Khair. The plural of it is khairat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this reality as an order, as a command, as a guidance. And he also related to us from the attributes of the prophets and messengers that they used to compete in these things. Now, the messenger وسلم, taught us that as a Muslim, you should not only aspire to get into paradise, you should aspire to be in the highest place in paradise. And when you are making a dua, you should be a role model. You are a role model not only to the rest of humanity, a role model not only to the rest of the Muslims or believers. Allah Almighty taught us to make dua to be role model for al muttaqin for the righteous people. That is how a Muslim aspires. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. So you are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a role model for those people. And that is how a Muslim aspires. This is the real competition. And this was the application from by the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. The Sahaba used to ask the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the best among people? They are aspiring to be the best. Not only who is a good person or a bad person. Who is the most honorable among them? Who is the most perfect among them? And so on. This is the question. Why? That is their aspiration. This is what they want, to be the best in every category. The best in righteousness, the best in perfection of faith, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And if you want to summarize the concept of goodness in Islam, even the summary will take very long. We'll try inshallah to highlight some of the concepts about it. Now those who are highlighted by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and by Allah Almighty, and we try to take some glimpses only about it, very quick ones. Now, the concept of goodness can be summarized with one point only, which is good ethics or morals, high esteem moral. You can summarize the whole concept of goodness in this. And that is why the Messenger وسلم, he said in two hadith, the one, the best among you are those who are best in character. Best in morals, in dealing. In the other ver uh, hadith, the Messenger وسلم, the most perfect in faith are those who are best in morals. Can be summarized with this. All your relations and interactions with people can be under the umbrella of morals and etiquettes and manners. Now, there is another point regarding that. The Messenger وسلم, gave us also another guidelines. When he was asked about those who are best, he says, the best among you are those who are longer in age and better in action, or best in actions, in goodness. So you have two things, length in time, duration, and in essence, or actions, or dealings. If you combine both of them together, that is when you will be among the best. Because there are people, for example, who are good throughout their life, but their life is short, cut short. Can be cut short in two ways. Either he does not live long enough to fulfill whatever he is desiring for, or he wasted so much of his time so he did not actually achieve much during that time. So the length in age, do not take it only as numbers. Numbers does not make a, a, a lot of difference. The reality is, what have you done within this period of time? 
we have among the outstanding scholars in Islam who didn't live long. They died in the late 30s, in the early 40s, the late 40s, and so on. And their legacies, their books, their heritage is so huge. Probably it will take you your whole life just to read them. Not to invent it as knowledge and scholarly. How is this even possible? That is it. Within this duration, what have you done? So this is the highlight from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we need to pinpoint one aspect. Very important. So the goodness in morals and characteristics, the truest part of that is within a family, within closed circles. So a person can be viewed by others as, mashallah, he is having good characteristics. He is very gentle person. He is very lenient, very easygoing with his friends, with his uh, colleagues and so on. But inside the family, inshallah, he turns into a lion. That's the exact opposite. Or he secluded himself. And that's it. Now is this a good person in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us criteria about who is the best of men, who is the best of women, who is the best of children. And then who is the best among colleagues and, 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 and friends and the best of neighbors. We can highlight just very quickly some of these. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about men, the best among you are those who are best to their women. Woman is usually the weaker partner in, in, in the family. So those who are best to those women are actually those who are best in the sight of Allah Almighty. Because this is the reality. If they are good only to other people, to outsiders, to people who are superior to them, this is not real goodness. But when your goodness reflects upon those who are closer to you, those who are weaker, those who are under your authority and responsibilities, that is when it shows that you are a truly good person. When it comes to the woman, the Messenger Sallallahu also highlighted the best among the women is the wife who, if her husband orders her, she obeys. If he looks at her, he, she pleases him. Now, the, the, this concept, and then if he is uh, not there, not present, if he's away, she protects him and holds his hon honor in herself and in his money, in his family and in herself. Now here, the first one, the Messenger of Islam said that if he looks at her, she pleases him. What does that mean? This is a common from, from the family problems that we receive usually, referred to us in, in family arbitration. And you find that one of the common complaints is that shortly after marriage, the woman turns into the house more like, uh, you, you might say, a servant-like. She is no longer a wife. She either turns into servant-like or mother-like, and she forgets that she is also a wife. So inside the house, she does not take care of herself, she does not present herself, and so on. Why, if she visits her friends, or there is a wedding, or there is a ceremony, that is when you see the woman that you married. The rest, you do not know who this woman is. There is a problem here. So, and, and there is another, this is not only about women. Don't be so happy, mashallah, most of you are laughing. This, the same is true about men. Inside the house, mashallah, they are in their uh, underwears only. <laughs> Outside, they present themselves. In both of them, Aisha radiallahu anha used to advise women, she says, present yourself all the time as you present yourself to your friends and visitors. As if you have a ceremony. This is how you present yourself to your husband. And Ibn Abbas used to say that I like to prepare and present my, myself to my wife I, I, as, I, as I wish her to present herself to me. I do the same. I present myself to my wife as I wish her to present herself to me. So the concept highlighted by the Messenger وسلم, revolves about different aspects required from uh, a wife within the family household. When it comes to the children, who is the best among children? Now, this is a very lengthy topic. But in short, those who pray for their parents. If you remember to pray to your parents all the time, then, inshallah, you are among those who are good children. If you do not remember them only on their anniversaries, or only when they are in trouble, or only uh, occasionally something is wrong. Because when the Messenger وسلم, mentioned what remains to them after their death, the Messenger وسلم, said, 
or a righteous son who prays for them. So if you pray for them, inshallah, you're righteous. Else, problematic. So never forget that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as an order to the human being, to thank me and your parents. Thanking Allah Almighty, the scholars of tafsir, they say, anyone who prays the five obligatory prayer, he have thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who prays to his parents, after them, he has thanked his parents. It should be regular, similar to the prayers. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined them in the same verse. And that is why, make it your daily routine to pray to your parents, whether they are alive or dead. When it comes to the friends and to the neighbors, two types of closeness. Closeness of the heart to your friends and to your likeness, and closeness in proximity, in your place of stay. The Messenger وسلم, combined both of them in the same hadith. He says, the best among friends are those who are best to their friends. And the best among neighbors are those who are best to their neighbors. So this is what, what accommodates a person as a Muslim. What defines a Muslim in his relationship. This type of goodness that the Messenger وسلم, highlighted. When it comes to another concept about knowledge, the Messenger وسلم, said, but the goodness in knowledge, and he says the best are those who collect knowledge, study and learn, and then disperse and spread this knowledge. And the most important knowledge is the knowledge of the Quran, because it holds the best in this world and in the hereafter. It's guidance in this world, guidance in the hereafter. And that is why the Messenger وسلم, said the best among you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. As long as you are learning and teaching, Alhamdulillah, will be among those who are best in this aspect. Another aspect that can be highlighted, which is the goodness uh, inside and outside, hidden and apparent. The Messenger وسلم, said, the best among you are those who have clean heart and truthful tongue. The Sahaba وسلم, said, truthful tongue, we know it. But what is cleaned heart? How do you clean? Dusted heart, you might say. How, we do not understand the concept of this. So the Messenger وسلم, highlighted to them, what does it mean to have a clean heart? He says, it is the pious one and the purified one that does not have any hatred or enmity or envy or bad feeling or ill thought about other people and does not have any sin toward other people or injustice. Two categories. One of them about your inside, nobody knows about it except you. This is only about the heart. Second one, how it reflects upon your relationship with other people. So purifying yourself from all negative thoughts and bad thoughts, etc. And from bad actions based on those thoughts in the form of sins, God forbid, belittling other people, ill thoughts about them and so on or injustice done to them. So the Messenger وسلم, here, mentioning the concept of goodness by speech and goodness by feelings and actions. All of them combined within this point. Another form that combines between speech and action as well, the Messenger وسلم, said, the best is to feed, give food or share food, and to reply to the salam, to the greeting. So we have two types here mentioned by the Messenger وسلم, which is goodness toward others by speech and by action. We can highlight with one more or two, two, two aspects. The first one, the goodness in transactions or dealings with other people. We are speaking specifically about the financial one. The Messenger وسلم, highlighted the goodness while you are selling, while you are buying, while you are giving, while you are taking, while you are complaining or filing the case against someone, and while you are being arbitrated. Goodness in all of that. But the goodness or the, the best among them, the Messenger وسلم, mentioned one outstanding out of them in another hadith, which is when you return the rights of other people. A person can be good when he is receiving. But what about when you are returning? Here the Messenger وسلم, said, the best among you are those who are best while delivering, while giving back, while returning. The best, if you are doing it in the best possible way, what does it mean in the best possible way? First, 
is you return it in full without diminishing anything or changing anything in it. And the second part is you return it on time or beforehand. And if you can, to give him something extra as a favor from your own, not agreed upon, to make it, to please him, more, more than that. And without delay or repeated uh, delays or telling him tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, next week, and so on. So if you are sending the right of people or delivering the right of people on time in the best possible way, that will make you, in dealings, the best among people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, uh, last aspect we want uh, to highlight, uh, the goodness in Islam takes many forms. So it's not only about your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadah, the best in ibadah, etc. But it's also about your relationship with other people. And that is why if you are paying attention to this, to your relationship with other people, that is what, that what, that is what will make you among the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So learn this aspect and teach your children about it. Most of these are not by talking. You will never learn this concept by talking. It needs practice and it reads lots of effort and struggle to change yourself, change your mentalities, your behavior, so that you will be among those who are best. Our life nowadays, when we are treating people according to what they treat us, this is wrong. All of it is wrong. If he is good to me, I am good to him. If he visit me, I'll visit him. If he give me a gift, I'll give him a gift, and so on. This is not Islam. Everybody is like that. All people. A Muslim is good to other people even when they are bad to him. Why? Because his goodness is towards whom? Towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you doing it to him? Do you expect the reward from him or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So what do you expect? That is why some people say, for example, when you are dealing with other people, always deal with them according to what you like to be dealt with. True. When you are dealing with them, keep in your mind. Deal with them according to what Allah Almighty like you to do at that time. So if you will concentrate on this aspect, whatever it is, whether it is a speech or say or, or, or dealing, at good time, bad times, what does Allah Almighty love you to do at this time? What is the most or the best thing that you can do? If you try these, inshallah, you'll be among the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah Almighty to make us among those who are best. And we pray to Allah Almighty to make us among those who does righteousness and those who hasten to do these righteousness and those who compete in righteousness and goodness. And may Allah Almighty make us a role model to all pious people. And may Allah Almighty make us the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in paradise. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.